Cool. Okay. Um, so could you just tell me about a bit about yourself, like where you come from and how you kind of led into editing? How did I get into editing? So um, when I was at university, I knew I just wanted to work in film and I didn't know the first thing about the film industry at all. Um, and I got a job as a runner in a post-production company, which was on the advice of a friend who'd done a similar thing. Um, I mean, honestly, I'm not really quite sure how I managed to do it because I, you know, I just had no idea about how you would start working in films. Um, and maybe that naivety was actually paid off. I just, I, I got a phone book, um, quite literally, I got a phone book and went to a phone box and phoned companies and asked if I could be a runner. Um, and two of them said yes, and I, I plumped for one of the jobs, which was in a film company, and it was a really, really great company. Um, and yeah, and so it sort of went from there. And then, so that was post-production, a post-production company in Soho, and I met lots and lots of editors and assistant editors, you know, all day, all I was doing was running film cans back and forth across Soho on a trolley, um, and got to meet lots of people and just, yeah, it just felt like that was the right place for me to be. It just, it felt like the right environment for me. Um, I really enjoyed it right from the beginning. So just, yeah, and then, and then left that company and got a job as a freelance, as an assistant on, on a film cutting room and sort of it went from there. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, what, what would you say kind of inspires you when you're actually, when you're cutting? Is there anything? Um, what inspires me? That's a hard well, question, isn't it? It is a hard <laughs> question. Um, do you know what? When, when, when I started working, and actually for a long time, and still a little bit now, I always feel like I should be inspired by all the same things that everybody else is, and the same films that everybody else is. And when somebody asks you what your favourite film is, I feel like I should be saying... The Godfather or you know Raging Bull or something not that I you know I love those films and they're great and they're really enjoyable but they weren't that wasn't what inspired me at all um I honestly <laughs> inspiration comes in many forms sometimes it's just a lot of coffee sometimes yeah. it's a walk outside sometimes it's watching something fantastic on tv I don't get to the cinema as much um since having kids so most of my viewing is done at home um but i just i just love a story i just love a good story anything that kind of gets me in a human relationship is is what inspires me um i love films about dance as well yeah, okay. so when i was younger i absolutely loved things like dirty dancing and footloose and yeah. blues brothers like so like honestly those were the films that when I was a teenager that got me into, got me interested in film. Um, so sort of early inspiration came from films like that, not the kind of typical big boys films, if you like, that people often quote. And, um, you know, and like I say now, it's, it's, it's anything that just, anybody that can convey a feeling that is hard to put into words, I find inspirational, you know, something that you almost can't say why it was so good, but you were just so moved by it. Um, and that can come in a short film and a feature film. Yeah. I was going to say, when I, when I first moved to London, um, I used to go to the Prince Charles cinema all the time, like weekly, twice weekly. I've kept all my cinema tickets, everything I've ever been to see, they're in a box. And um, so, yeah, at that point, when I had a lot of spare time in my hands, I would just go and see absolutely anything that I could. And, um, you know, I would still watch anything now, really, good or bad. I, I still love watching a film, watching a story, but it feels like the sort of, it feels like a little bit more of a luxury now to just, you know, to, to have a clear window of, um, two and a half hours um, to sit back and enjoy something is, gets, yeah. you know, less frequent. <laughs> I, I, I find the thing of like, there's a list, like I just have a list uh, that I need to watch. I have a list of what I've watched. Yeah. And then there's the stuff that maybe I really want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> and the stuff I really want to watch is probably sometimes 
really poppy, you know, or yeah. it's stuff, maybe, maybe it does fall more in our house uh, cinema, but it's stuff that I've already seen like 10 times. But yeah. I think that's, it's important to dip into that list. Absolutely. Well, you know? Yeah. I have an actual list on my fridge as well. And in fact, when lockdown started, I, did, I wrote a new list thinking we're going to have so much time to watch films. And I've watched one that's on that list of about 30, unfortunately. Um, I tell you, someone else who I've always really liked watching is Terence Malick's uh, films, okay. particularly yeah. just somebody who can get a feeling across that is hard to put into words. Yeah. You know, his use of sound and, um, yeah, especially his, his kind of soundscapes that he goes with. Yeah. I really like, yeah. Amazing. Um, so we're, we're, we're talking about uh, Helena, this film that you and I worked on together. Can you discuss your approach to, to editing? So I think having read a script, you know, if I feel confident in the script and having talked to a director, then that is... Oh God, can you hear my cat? That's my cat meowing. I was worried that the, that's worried that the kids are going to come bursting here, in and actually <laughs> it's the cat that's meowing outside the door. Um, sorry. Um, I just... The, the thing that I like most about editing is the first time you watch the rushes and I just want that moment to be completely undisturbed and I just really try and just tune in to my very first reaction of seeing a take. And I try and remember that throughout the edit, like what did I respond to the most when I first watched it? Cause you only get that first watch once you see. Um, so that's one of the main things I try and do is I just really, really try and feel that first response. And I trust that, you know, sometimes I worry that I'm ne you know, I'm not going to be able to put something together, no matter how great the director or the script or the rush is, you know, you have that fear of like, what if I just can't do it? Or I put something together and it's so terrible that I'm like, what have you done? Um, but I love, I love the amount of time that editing takes. I love the fact that things come to you completely unexpectedly, you know, a month down the line, something that you just never would have thought of in the, that first week. It's such a nice process to go through that, that sort of period that it just has to take. It has to take a certain amount of time. Um, so I just, I try and trust that that will come. If, I, if I'm facing something that's difficult in an edit or a scene that I just doesn't feel right to me in terms of how I've cut it, I just trust that eventually something will present itself either through watching it through with the director or just sitting back and having a break from it for a couple of days. Um, so I think those are the kind of two things that I just think about most when I'm, when I'm editing here yeah, is that first response um, and holding on to that first response and then knowing that answers will come to you, you know, further down the line. I like that uh, talking about watch, watching the rushes the first time. It's like, it's the possibilities, isn't it? It's all yeah, that. yeah. And, you know, quite often when you're at script stage talking through the director, they want to know how you're going to approach something. And I hate that question <laughs> because I don't know. I mean, until you see it, I just, there's only so much you can get from a script. You yeah. know, you, if, if the story's working on the page, then that's good enough for me. You know, if there's a really glaring problem, then, then that's a different matter. But on the basis of a, of a script that works and a story that works, I, I often don't have any more answers at that stage than, you know, until you get, because it's, it's often, it's so very different. When you get the rushes in, you get a completely different feel or you see something that perhaps you, you know, you hadn't seen yourself in the script that the director knew was there, but you just, you just didn't know it. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fair enough. So uh, what's, what's next? Anything? What is next? Well, yeah, post lockdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, where, where are any of us going to be, I guess? Is that... I mean, rather encouragingly, there's, I've spoken to three different directors who have got projects that are hoping to start in the autumn nice. um, to a couple of shorts and a, and a longer documentary. But whether, 
whether shoots will start then is anybody's guess. Um, so hopefully kids yeah. will be back at school. Yeah. Productions can start again <laughs> and I can get back to work. <laughs> yeah. No, fair enough. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, do you, do you want to plug any kind of social media stuff? Um, I don't really, I, I don't really go in for social media that much. Okay. Um, I have a website katriannadalbridge.com okay um, and we'll social media up here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> social media makes my scrambles my head a bit I, I try and do it a little bit but I'm yeah that's fair enough yeah. <laughs> okay great that's it I'm just gonna thank you very much thank you